Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a Vietnam War veteran, Frank. His life came to a halt for several decades, but everything is about to change drastically. Frank was raised in a fairly regular family, spending his entire youth helping his mother and father, on a farm in California. But the simple life did not bother him. On the contrary, he learnt to appreciate the little things, such as his connection with Lindsay, who he hoped to marry. Unfortunately, the young couple's ambitions were thwarted by the Vietnam War. Frank swore to return from the war as quickly as possible, but his time at the front ended up being longer than intended. The youngster was held captive by the enemy for seven years, in a faraway location. He was tortured and interrogated, but he was able to escape finally. Frank returned to his own country due to an injury. He dashed to his girlfriend's residence after leaving the hospital. However, it turns out that she moved on with her life. He tries to focus on his career, and initially applies to the police academy, hoping to be in, because of his battle experience, but is turned down due to a significant injury. So he goes to interviews, but is rejected, because of his lack of higher education. At this point, he starts selling hot dogs on the street. But 40 years later, everything changes. Next, Frank is taking his usual route on a bus. When two skinheads get into the vehicle, they start harassing a black passenger, demanding that he make room for them. The man refuses, and the skinheads are going to beat up the old man, but Frank steps in. He only wants to scare the guys away, and swears he won't fight them. However, they appear to be asking for a beating. The bus passengers applaud Frank. He is unaware that one of them has recorded the entire scene. The video goes viral, and Frank earns the moniker badass. His face is painted on walls and t-shirts. Cops offer Frank a ride home, like he's their closest friend, and reporters compete for an interview with the viral sensation. Most importantly, his mother is extremely proud of him. However, the euphoria is fleeting. Soon, Frank's mother passes away, leaving him with a large house and her dog. He now only has one loved one left in his life, his best friend Klondike, who is also a combat veteran. Klondike assists Frank in settling into his new house. They talk about their wartime experiences, and Klondike thanks his comrade for saving his life on the battlefield, a long time ago. The men hope that their lives will finally improve. Klondike instructs his friend to hide a suspicious flash drive in his safe, a device that old-fashioned Frank sees for the first time. Klondike walks off to acquire cigarettes. He encounters two thugs in the car, as he exits the shop. They demand he hand over the flash drive, and when he claims not to understand what they're saying, they put a gun to his head. The man knocks the attackers to the ground, and is about to flee, but then gets shot. Frank is summoned for body identification. He asks the cops to do everything they can to find his best friend's killers. Later, he gets approached by his neighbor outside the house. She is empathetic to his loss, and informs him that her brother was recently slain in a location similar to Klondike's. The woman complains that the local police do little to solve incidents like this, and Frank subsequently informs his cop acquaintance about it. The cop guarantees that they will do everything possible. However, some time later, Frank is watching television, and notices that a white boy has lately been murdered in their town, and the culprit has been captured. The man goes to the police station the next day, frustrated by the lack of movement in the investigation. Again, he is told that the officers are working all day and night. He ultimately realizes that he cannot rely on the cops for assistance. As a result, he travels to the crime scene himself. He discovers three pieces of evidence, a fired bullet casing, a chain, and a pendant with a girl's picture on it. After that, he travels to the lone gun store in town, to find out what kind of gun fired the bullet. The local expert informs him that these rounds are only used in certain weapons for military and special agents, and that he does not have any in stock. However, the salesman recognizes the girl from the jewelry he discovered, and informs her that she is the wife of a black man named Terence, who lives a few blocks away. The consultant instructs Frank on how to get to the house. Next, a weary girl with a baby opens the door for him. Frank concludes from their chat that Terence hasn't gone home to his wife and three children in a long time, and she hasn't seen her husband in weeks. Finally, the girl claims that her friends just saw Terence on a basketball court, and requests Frank to give him a pep talk who rushes to the basketball court, and asks the locals about Terence's location, but they won't tell him anything. This is when the signature badass punch comes into play. Terence's buddy's demeanor shifts. They provide the coordinates of a specific Ronaldo, who could be able to help. Frank discovers a weird man, dressed as the Holy Father at the address. It turns out to be Ronaldo's neighbor, who mistakes Frank for a thief. When he discovers the truth, he tells him which pub Ronaldo frequents in the morning. 
Frank observes an upsetting occurrence in the evening. His next-door neighbors, a young couple, are arguing noisily on the threshold. The man departs, leaving Amber alone with her kid Martin. Frank brings the girl to his home, to wash the wound on her face inflicted by her violent husband. They have a pleasant conversation, and spend their time together. The next morning, Frank goes to the bar to hunt for Ronaldo. The guys on the first floor recognize him, and express their displeasure at seeing him. Then Frank must demonstrate his combat abilities once again, before reaching the second floor, where Ronaldo is. When asked about Terence, Ronaldo suddenly takes out a knife, and declares he won't reveal anything to him. But after sticking Ronaldo's head out into the street, he swiftly gives up. He claims Terence has been dating a girl, who works as a massage therapist at a local salon. Frank departs on his way home, satisfied. On the way, the man is apprehended by a cop friend. He claims that tales regarding Frank's exploits are already circulating across the area. In addition, the chief almost issued an arrest warrant for him. Frank responds he can't stand by and watch the cops do nothing about his best friend's death. The officer responds that it is not Frank's duty, and he will no longer assist him if he continues. When Frank gets into his house, he notices that it has been vandalized. Before he has a chance to take a look around, a large man grabs him. The stranger demands Frank hand over the flash drive right away, but Frank pretends not to understand, and throws the uninvited guest out the window. Following that, he approaches his neighbor Martin, and requests to see the contents of the flash drive handed to him by Klondike. It includes a map of the municipality, certain building permits, and contact information. Frank is unsure what his friend has to do with anything, but he recalls the weird nickname Panther. Later, Frank visits the Asian massage salon, and makes an appointment with Tatiana. She questions why he scheduled a session with her, and he responds that he is seeking Terence. When she hears it, the girl gets terrified. After she finishes her shift, Frank follows her home, but when he tries to enter via the window, he is observed by a neighbor. He rejects Frank's lies about being Tatiana's boyfriend, and demands that he come closer. He immediately changes his attitude, identifying the stranger as the badass from TV. He not only lets Frank go, but he also reminds him that the girl never closes the back door. Frank walks to the second floor, and finds Tatiana and Terence sleeping. The stranger attempts to shoot Frank, but Frank immediately apprehends him, and drags him into the kitchen. He shoves Terence's hand into the waste shredder, and demands to know who and why Klondike was murdered. Terence screams in agony, and gives up. He claims Klondike was murdered by his partner Sebastian, and they were both simply doing their jobs. Terence initially refuses to reveal who is issuing the commands, but after another round of torture, he divulges Panther's name and location. When Frank returns home, he notices the couple next door bickering once again, although this time the man is considerably more aggressive than before. Frank steps in, and requests that he leave Amber alone. When the husband suspects his wife is cheating on him with a neighbor, Frank quickly twists his arm, and sends him away. Amber, overjoyed, rushes into Frank's arms, and tells him that he appears exhausted. She proposes he get some rest, and come over for dinner, especially since Martin is staying with a friend. Frank, on the other hand, has no time for sleep. Excited, he makes elaborate dinner preparations, puts on his nicest outfit, and purchases flowers. Amber is enthralled by his new appearance, and they enjoy a delicious meal. Frank is delighted with the homemade food, and the woman expresses her joy at finally being able to cook for someone who appreciates it. She admits to Frank when she married, her husband was quite different, and he is now irrevocably transformed. They afterwards sit on the terrace and talk. But, when the long-awaited moment for a kiss arrives, her son arrives. The three of them then have a great time together, and at the end of the evening, Frank offers them a place to stay, while their front door is broken. The badass's big day has arrived. First, he approaches his cop buddy, and hands him the flash drive. He claims that it contains vital information that led to Klondike's death, and he requests his friend to look after the dog, if anything happens to him. Then Frank goes to church, and tells the priest he's ready to commit a major sin. Finally, in the evening, he travels to the warehouse that Terence had told him about. The thug guards initially refuse to let him in, but when Panther hears a familiar voice, he emerges from the shadows. Panther is accused of murdering Frank's best friend. The mobster responds he was merely trying to punish Klondike, for stealing something very valuable to him. He demands the flash drive from Frank, and when he again claims ignorance, the criminals tie him up, and place him in the electric chair. Torture, however, can no longer frighten Frank. He's been through it before, so he's strong, and doesn't give anything away. Panther eventually loses patience. 
he directs his subordinates to finish what they started, and departs. The mafioso deduces that Frank's girlfriend is waiting for him at home, and decides to pay her a visit. But what he doesn't realize is that Frank already had a strategy in mind. Frank throws a box of lit flamers onto a gasoline barrel, causing an explosion, and manages to free himself from the chains. He captures Panther, and battles him hand to hand. The gangster wounds him with a weapon he finds, and flees not far from the warehouse. Panther pulls over to the side of a bus, pushes the driver out, and drives away. Frank notices this, and boards a different bus, which the other driver willingly gives up, because he recognized him. Frank pursues Panther after nearly colliding with him, but Panther escapes. The gangster then provokes him, and drives head-on at him. But at the last second, Frank takes a turn, and his bus overturns. Panther, in turn, collides with the approaching train. They both miraculously survive. The mobster flees, and Frank chases after him. He encounters the same skinheads who made him famous, along the road. They despise the man for making them a laughingstock for others, and fantasize about exacting retribution, and creating a new film in which they triumph, but things don't go as planned, and Frank beats them up. Panther, armed with a knife, has already entered the house, and greets Amber. But he doesn't have time to even touch her, as Frank arrives on the threshold, and shoves the outlaw against the wall. They wind up in the street, and Frank collapses. Panther would have beaten him to a pulp, if it weren't for Amber, who leaps atop the thug's back. She gives Frank enough time to get up, and he eventually defeats the gangster. The locals cheer him, and Amber requests that he allow her to cure his wounds, like he did for her. The next day, the tale is broadcast on local TV. The badass has returned. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.